I'd struggle to support my brethren if he was a male stripper. Do you know what I mean? You've got the Russians around, it's just like, it's us, <laughs> me and Dave, yeah. do you know what I mean? Permanent bad breath or permanent B.O.? These choices are disgusting, you know that? <laughs> Travis J, welcome to Comics in the Field. Scan all fam. You are the comic, this is the field. I know that. We are here. It's a bit of an unusual setting, but Very we're, bro, we're, we're trying something, we're trying something. Right. What do you think? It's different, do you know what I'm saying? Obviously, I don't know you that well, so this could still be a setup, do you know what I'm saying? It could, it could be a setup for real, you're right. <laughs> Strangers in a forest. This like. is true, this is true. Does anyone know you're here? No one Just knows exactly where I am. Okay, I've okay. come to London, that's all I've okay, said to my missus. Okay, you're, you're, you're in safe hands, you're in safe hands. <laughs> you ever have those things where it's like, obviously, whilst we're in the UK, we keep to ourselves, innit? But yes. the minute you go abroad, you hear like a British accent somewhere else. You just become friends. <laughs> yeah, you do, yeah. I don't like Dave. all that. Yeah, <laughs> all of a sudden now you lot are an alliance. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? You've got the Russians around. It's just like, it's us, <laughs> me and Dave. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Talk me through what made you want to go into a craft that walks into a, a room full of, rook, of people who are saying, but not saying, make me laugh. I know, it's, it's, it's a What very, kind of madness is that? It's a warped thing to want to do. It's weird though, because like my, my way into the game has been quite different. So my mum's a stand-up comic, right? Yes. Angie Lamar. Yes. And you know, she's one of the pioneers mm -hmm. of UK comedy. Grew up on your mum. Exactly. So I've grown up around comedy, like in a different way. Like my parents, they're not really heavy on the babysitter thing. Okay. So I was at shows. Okay, <laughs> I okay, was at shows okay. From, from little, I was backstage. Do you know what I mean? So it's like when I when I became a comic myself and I see guys like Curtis Walker and yes. Felix Dexter and these Legends, guys, bro, they're bro. not looking at me like, oh, new comic. They're like, oh, right, look how tall you're getting. You look okay. like your dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like family, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So because it was always around me, it's that thing of like, you know, nature versus nurture, mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, am I doing this because I just love comedy for no reason? Or am I doing this because it's in my literal mm -hmm. genetics? Mm -hmm. So I've never really been able to nail it down, but I just knew that once I went to a comedy club as an adult, there was that feeling like I can, I can do that. What was the worst gig you ever did? So basically I've won a competition and the prize was to perform at Camden Centre. So I was gassed. I get out of there, all my jokes, which I believe are the killers, yes. they're not landing. I had this bit about a black break. I say basically it's too much pressure being black sometimes. Uh -huh. So I like to just take some time okay, off. Okay. I was like the simple things like you can't fall down being black. Mm -hmm. You fall down being white, people, you know, they start with a yes, yeah. Oh my gosh, there's Gary, there's Steve. How can we <laughs> help? help you? Who can yeah. we call? <laughs> black people, they just laugh. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you yeah. see what I'm saying? So I get to the last joke now and I'm delivering a joke. They start clapping midway through the joke. I'm thinking in my head, finally got them on side. And I'm like, hang on a second. That's not even really in rhythm with the where the punchline is. They're clapping me off stage. Oh, no. They're saying, we've had enough, bro. That's it. We're by Ducks. When was the last time you saw Ducks? <laughs> I know that you're, you're, you're in country now. Yeah, not that, not that long ago, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> last time I saw Duck was in a rap. In a rap? rap last week, no, where's some duck rap thing? Oh no, bro, this ain't <laughs> the time. I'm just saying it. Sorry, guys, last don't, time I saw that's crazy. Don't, you one, of your hey. brethren, one of your brethren, one of your brethren, because it tastes nice, <laughs> yeah. tastes good, tastes good. These are still, Shift him up, man. Good, man, tastes nice, tastes nice. What do you think about some people that think there are some things you just can't make funny out of? No, I think it's all in the approach. It's all in the approach because you get some comics that just want to piss people off. Mm. If my intentions are pure, it will connect. You'll feel me when I'm on stage because mm. I try to be as transparent as possible. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Whereas you get comics who are, oh, you're just saying that to try and piss off a sure, certain group sure. and now you want the response and now you're the victim mm -hmm. and you can't say anything, freedom of speech. And it's like, you can see the game. Mm -hmm. Whereas with me, I'm like, bro, if I feel like I want to talk about this thing, I'm going to put it out in such a way, you'll know I'm not here to just piss people off. I might be curious about something and talk my way through it. Mm -hmm. I've had moments where there's people in the audience from different demographics, like really different way of life. And now it's just like, okay, I've got some questions. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. we can talk, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm like, I don't really feel like anything's off the table. Just don't be a dickhead, is it? A couple years ago, I supported Dave Chappelle on tour. <laughs> Fives. Thank you, thank you. Like, honestly, that was the <laughs> best day of my life. The first day of that tour, best day of my life. And I say that as a man that has kids. <laughs> I have seen my kids come into this world and take their first breath. Wasn't my favorite day. Dave Chappelle was over a couple of years ago and he was having some parties. He's like, every day there was a new Dave Chappelle party and everybody was going like, Trav, you wanna come through? And I'm like, I don't wanna meet him in a rave. No, Do you know what I'm no. saying? Like, this ain't how I wanna meet no, Dave Chappelle. No. And I remember seeing him outside the venue and I was with my boy and he's like, right, that's Dave. And I just walked straight past him. Cause I was like, 
Not on the stage, yeah, not on the stage, yeah, bro. Yeah, this is where it's gonna yeah, happen. Yeah. So I do my set, and I'm out of my mind this night. This something about him being there, I was cooking. So anyway, he's hosting, and he takes the mic off me, and I'll never forget. He brings me like this, and he's like, "Man hugs," and he pulls me, and he's like, "You fucking killed it." <laughs> I love that. And brother, I'm walking off stage, <laughs> gassed. I could have floated backstage. I was absolutely. So then afterwards, now we're all on stage, we're taking that picture, and Dave Chappelle's there, and I'm just like, "Oh, this is a moment." So I pull my phone out. And I'm just like, just trying to get a video of me just tattling to Dave. To, as I pull out the thing, he's just like, he's amazing. He killed it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. nah, no, that's no, a no, video, no, bro. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd struggle to support my brethren if he was a male stripper. Okay. So it's okay. like, if he was a rapper, yeah, and I he's on stage. That. Yeah, even if he was rubbish. Donnie could be on stage on some living my life, trying to be an MC, trying to get my education. I'd be like, yeah, bro, that's my do brother. Do your thing. SoundCloud, you know I mean? support my brother. <laughs> but if you're on stage and you're doing some stripper thing, bro, how you want me to back that? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> do you know what I mean? We do a podcast with KG. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's start with Travis J. Yeah. Waste man. Yeah, okay. I'm 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 gonna, man. Gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I told him I was going to cut story, gonna, What's the yeah. most annoying thing about Travis? He's late. Okay. But then he's late, but he comes with like energy of everybody get locked in. Bro, we've been building this set. <laughs> Where the hell have you been? <laughs> nah. And he comes he like, like, he rocks up like, is everybody ready to work? <laughs> Fam. <laughs> and it's the way he talks in his car though. He's like, it's, and you can hear the pause. Trav, where are you? Ah. Uh, so listen. <laughs> Imagine, well, he gives you, it's either so listen, Imagine, you know, it's a, you know what's coming next. Bro, don't imagine. Just be on time. Yeah. What's the most annoying thing about him? Oh, fam. Listen, yeah. This guy don't check his phone for nothing. Bro, his wife complains about the same thing. It's so jarring. You have to understand, yeah. There's so many moments where if he just answered his phone, yes. he would have gamed. Okay. Like, we got the boxing podcast, right? We're working together on that. One time we did a video about Lennox Lewis and he was going off talking crazy about Lennox Lewis. Lennox responded, posted it on Twitter. A mutual friend of his was somehow in the same hotel as Mike Tyson abroad, right? Mike Tyson phones KG to cuss him off about no what he way. said about Lennox. He missed the call. He Ended missed the call from Mike Tyson. He missed the call from Mike Tyson. Ended up getting a video <laughs> recording of him. Leave Lennox Lewis alone. Like, but <laughs> he could have spoken to Mike Tyson. Another thing I'm going to talk to you a little bit about is you mentioned that your, your mum is Angela Ma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you said that you'd go to shows with her. Yeah. But do you ever kind of reference jokes and sets with her or, or oh. skits or are you kind of separate nah, it's, like it's, that? It's very separate. Like I wouldn't. And like, for example, probably like five years into my career where people found out she was actually my mum. Mm. And I say that, but only my core audience found out she was my mum okay. then. Like I did my first one man show and I got her to host it. Mm -hmm. So it was like confirmation. Okay, this is a thing. Oh, okay. I never leaned into it as a thing. I always wanted to have the respect of my peers as a sure, comic sure. first. So like even my name, Travis J, yeah. Lamar, it yeah. doesn't link yeah. straight away. Yeah. So on that front, that's kind of how I kept it separate. But in terms of like how it's in inspired me, like there's certain things she's done in her career that are on my list of things to do. Okay. Because, you know, it's just, that's who I'm following. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that I've done the things she's done. So it's that, it's that thing of having that guide. But also I think the most important part that, of our relationship is that she's been a, a pure mentor for okay. me. You know, first few years, a lot of people would be like, oh, she must be writing for him and all this yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah. She was like the most distant when I first started. Okay. Cause she was like, I remember the first convo when I told her I wanted to be a comedian. She's like, you just best not embarrass me. Yeah, <laughs> don't bring no smoke to my Straight, door. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I've worked too hard to have people out here saying that you're rubbish. Your son's dead. Yeah. <laughs> like, allow it. <laughs> so it's like the pressure has been on from early. Like I remember like one time Richard Blackwood was introducing me on stage. And like, I used to tell everyone, like, obviously don't leave the mom oh, thing yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Richard Blackwood. This next guy coming to the stage. He's from Goodstock. Angela Mar's son. <laughs> and I'm walking out, I'm thinking, he didn't even say my name. Right? <laughs> but then the crowd would cheer because they love her. Yeah, so the pressure's kind of double for you now. Yeah, yeah, I don't really get to be the new yes, rubbish yes, comic, like yes. figuring it out. So I've had that pressure for so long now. I'm like, it, there's no real situations that shake me in that way. Now you're not in South London. You could grow up a little bit. A little bit soft. You know what I'm saying, huh? Now I'm a bit worried about that. You know what I started doing? I started giving him South London lessons. Saturday, we drive in, we sit in Morley's. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You're gonna know the culture. You're gonna know the culture. Sit down, eat those wings. Eat those wings, bro. The little man talking about, I'm a pescatarian. No, not today. 
Not today. Eat the wings. Let's go. What's his name? What's his name? Boss man. There we go. Would you rather party in Kingston or Joburg? Kingston, same level of risk. I like that, I like that. You been before? Yeah, yeah but Jamaica you're talking about, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, I've been like Kingston on Thames and that. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no, I'll take on Jamaica, man. <laughs> permanent bad breath or permanent BO? These choices are disgusting, <laughs> you know that. Because you never man hug anyone confidently <laughs> ever again. <laughs> and the worst thing about bad breath, it just creeps up on you, you know? <laughs> it takes, you're like, whoa! Yeah, because the first time you smell it, it's like, right, something stinks. And it's like, every time you speak, I've made a correlation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. <laughs> I'm taking a body order, but I'll just be like a gym freak. So anytime you see me, I'm in gym fits. So it's like, it kind of explains. You've got an excuse. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just be working out. Yeah.